for me again for another drawing session. We're going to hit it hard today because I know we've missed a few weeks, so let's get back into drawing. Um, so sorry that I didn't like record um, Figure Friday for a little while, but there is a new episode that is up now on YouTube, so you can check that out. I just recorded it today, and we're going to do some animal drawing. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be a precursor into um, doing some some animal characters. So today I have something a little exciting, which is chickens. I have never, I don't think I've ever done, um, I definitely have never done chickens and this is only like the second time that we've done birds on here. So it will be an exciting new little piece for us. And we're gonna right now change the sizes, go in here and make them a little bit bigger so you can see them a um, whole lot better. And let me change, let me see, 200%. Maybe 250%. That's a good size. And just make them a lot bigger so it's um, easier to see. So nobody's struggling to kind of see the animals that we're going to be drawing today. So I hope that you guys enjoy because I am really excited to do this because <laughs> chickens are like one of the animals um, that obviously are common animals, but you never, I never really get to draw them. Um, they don't have them in the zoo. And they're just kind of a unique little bird. And even though they're probably, well, they are most popular for food, <laughs> they're still a really cool looking animal. And so I'm really excited to begin. Let me see, let me make this one like much bigger. Because, um, there we go. I'm just gonna, almost done. We've got a couple more here. And we're just gonna do some quick poses. We're gonna do about four minute poses. So that will give us enough time to just um, get the gist of the animal. We're gonna check out the shapes. We've got some fun, exciting shapes here for us today. So this should be pretty neat, I think. And actually, for the movie for right now, I'm watching um, a Disney collection. It's like a Mickey Mouse. Looks like a Christmas Carol or something like that. I didn't really <laughs> check it too well. I just opened up Netflix. I was like, what you got, Netflix? Uh, what do I have here on my list? Uh, too big. Let's see. Two hundred percent. That's better. Um, let me see. I just have two more images that I'm gonna resize first to draw. And let's see. Mark the size. Let's see. It's too big. That's pretty good. So there we go. And some of them are roosters, but there's all the chicken species. Hens and roosters, but all chickens. And it should be pretty fun. So if you haven't yet, you can go ahead and get a sketch pad or a drawing pad and um, draw along with me. Um, if you'd like, you can just um, watch me for the first few. And then if, if you, whenever you feel ready, you can go ahead and join me. So we're going to start now. And I'm going to do a four-minute pose. So let me get the timer ready. And we're going to go ahead and let me save this. Right now, so I don't um, mess up my template. And save that, and we're ready to go. So let's start. And let's see. I'm just going to go in and explore the shapes a little bit. It's nice. Um, let's pull up a nice big round chest here and put the back area in. Back area is much smaller but I still want to get like this nice angle and most of the time when I draw animals I do it with watercolor. Every time I go to draw the zoo which I do pretty often or if I'm doing a workshop um, I'm just um, drawing at home, drawing animals at from home which I'm doing a whole lot of now which I really am enjoying. Um, I usually use watercolors, and I use gouache also, but I use gouache as a watercolor. And um, so drawing here, um, using the Cintiq and just drawing through Photoshop gives me a whole other drawing experience. And I really get to um, play around with the line, which is, um, I do with watercolor. I mean, it's, it's very similar, but... Um, I'm able to depend more on the form when I'm going into the watercolor, but now just doing the line is 
it's really letting me get a get a sense of those shapes, which I think is really important. Let's see. That poor mix, and let's see how much detail we can get in. Really, more than the detail, I'm concerned with getting a pretty accurate depiction of just um, the proportion and giving a good sense of, of the animal through that. So I'll keep moving through here. Um, doesn't need to be totally polished as yet, just because we're doing such short poses, but we can get a still get a really good sense of the animal. Like you don't need to get into shading and stuff like that. What we really want to look at is where things change. And it's good to like know a little bit about um, what's happening underneath because there's so, there's such a, a thick, um, just layer of feathers. There's so many feathers and there's so much, um, what is it like, just puff on this thing. <laughs> you know, there's just so much on, on this bird. And even though they're they're such a common animal, um, they're really a magnificent creature. Like look at at the colors and and the shapes on this this bird. It's just really it's just really neat. I just want a little bit more room with the beak. Thinking about the eye. Want to think about. Um, the change of the feather texture. I don't want to get too much into detail, but if you look closely, you'll see that they have these much thinner, almost hair-like um, feathers that are closer on the head. And as you go out, there's this, this big um, change in the type of feathers. And they get much thicker and thicker and thicker up into the tail, which are the thickest ones. So just pay attention to things like that, where the, where the changes are happening. It's just going to help you get a better sense of how the way this animal is made, and that's going to help you create a much, um, a much more believable character when we get into the character design. So this is actually the study for doing character design, which um, you'll see in some of my other videos. I have the sketches of the realistic um, animal, and then I go back and I do a video where it'll be making characters based off of um, based off of the animal and, and just making a whole something just completely new. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to do another four minute pose. And this guy now. And this is also a rooster. I think the first one was a rooster too. I feel like I shouldn't start with the head. I don't know why I started with the head. I don't really like to start with the head. I like to really get the body in first. But I can go back and resize and things like that. But I really want to see like these shapes coming out. I want to keep it really balanced. So I'm not even going to put on the tail feathers immediately. I want to kind of get a sense of where the balance is with the chest as opposed to the back. The rear end and kind of see and just kind of like strutting almost it's like you can almost see on its feet just like standing on to the toe and fortunately <laughs> unfortunately for the chicken but fortunately for us uh, most of us have seen what a chicken looks like without feathers we've seen what a chicken um what chicken bones look like um we don't get the chance to see too many animal bones most of us anyway uh, but we do for the most part, get to see chicken because it's so common um, as a food um, in, all over the world, not just in America and the States, but like everywhere. So probably I'm guessing you've at least seen a uh, naked chicken once and have probably seen this, even a turkey skeleton that, you know, once you finish carving it on Thanksgiving, which is a really similar bird. I right, get the wing. 
Or chicken wing. Hopefully no one is going to eat. <laughs> and look at the, the difference with size of the head compared to the body. It's really incredible, actually. I'm going to make some changes. But in the most part, I mean, the head is like really, really tiny by comparison to the rest of the body. And it kind of like makes you think, you know, when you think that the dinosaurs were evolved, you know, from the same ancestors as birds like chickens, you know, um, you can kind of, <laughs> this might sound crazy, but you can kind of see like the similarities, like in like the, 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 um, the vast drasticness of the head size compared to the body size. You know what I'm saying? And then, and like, um, the big difference between, um, gosh, what was I going to say? <laughs> you have to forgive me. I'm on my second video for the day. I'm trying to, like, compose my, get my thoughts right. But, um, but you get what I'm saying? Like, just the, I don't know. I don't know. But I just think it's, it's funny how even like a bird like a chicken can can show similarities to something, you know, as as crazy as a dinosaur. I think it's I think it's pretty cool. And just starting to do like those hair like feathers that they have at the um top of the head. And if you ever watch chickens, um we have a farm, not really a farm, but a barn um at our local park close to me, which is um the William Hart Park. And there's all these little um animals and there's one chicken um, coop and there's one rooster in there and he and if you watch him you know he kind of pokes out his those um feathers around their head i don't know so much if the hens have it but the rooster really has these like almost like a mane that they have like right at the top of their head and they'll puff it out just and strut around the girls and you know <laughs> i guess i guess the girls like it i'm assuming i don't know but there we go there's our chicken number two and we're gonna do another one so let's go ahead and do this one and this one is actually a hen um and she does have like the main type of feathers around her i think it's a hen i could be wrong <laughs> all right we're gonna go ahead and do another four minute pose i think it's hen but i could be wrong it's almost like a U shape if you look at it. Funny. Up. Right, part that's like this. And then this big bottom part that bounces out and comes down and around. It's really interesting. And I'm just gonna, you know, the feather, the feather life, it just continues the motion of the body because they just keep on flowing. It's really pretty, actually. I think the way that this bird is shaped. I keep seeing this bird, I feel like a David Attenborough <laughs> describing, <laughs> describing chickens. I don't think he's ever done chickens before, but hey, if he does, then I would still watch it because he just has the greatest voice. And actually, I was just at the um, at the aquarium of the Pacific, which is a aquarium out here in um, in Long Beach, actually. And I watched. I don't usually like to pay the the extra fee eats things that they have at museums and and places like that. Um, so like they had like this film, and it was like a three D film, and it was like four bucks extra, you know, on top of. <laughs> whatever the fee was to go and watch this thing. It, it's only four bucks, you know, it, it's not much money. And I don't usually like to pay anything extra <laughs> when I go to um, the museum or, or an aquarium or any place like that. But I did, I thought, like, hey, let's, go, let's just go and do it. So me and my son went to go to the little film that they had. It was about penguins. And of course it was narrated by the infamous David Attenborough. 
a famous wildlife narrator. <laughs> and he's amazing. I think it, I think I enjoyed it just because he was narrating it. It just reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> I think I watched so many um, PBS specials with David At Attenborough when I was a kid. I just think it just reminds me of that. I think that's that's part of the reason why I just love. I mean, animals are my favorite thing to draw, um, hands down. And I think it, it really started from watching documentaries like that. So if you have kids, or if you want to still be a kid yourself, <laughs> wildlife documentaries. I think they're the best. My son doesn't care for that much, though. So. But he enjoyed this one at that point. It was really cool. And I felt like a nerd because I already knew all of the animal facts <laughs> before I even explained them. I'm like, oh gosh, am I really that bad? I watched too many of these and they were describing, you know, how the how the male penguin is um, responsible for the egg hatching. You know, that the, the male has to kind of hold the hen, not the hen, you see, I'm, I'm looking at a chicken, I say hen. It has to hold the egg, you know, on their feet and they carry them on their feet for however long until the egg hatches. And I'm like, I already know that, <laughs> like a nerd. So yes, I am a bit of a wildlife nerd, I think, but they're still cool to watch. I don't think I ever get tired of seeing those things. I can't see the bottom feet, which is really unfortunate because it does make a difference. Uh, I don't want to necessarily guess. I mean, it's good just to practice and kind of be aware of where they would fall in case of situations like this where you can't see the feet, but at this point, I really don't want to guess. I'm just going to leave the feet for now, unfortunately. And let's move on to the next sketch. There's another chicken. And we're going to start. And this one is a chicken. Okay, this is actually the chicken. Um, you can tell with that look at this big dress at the bottom. <laughs> They're almost like wearing a dress, it seems like. They have this, they have a, a heavier bottom side, I feel like, the hens, than the males do. They have a heavier bottom side. And they really have really like thick feathers on their bums. <laughs> and that's it's like a British word, I think, bums. But I don't know what else to call it. And it's it's like those um those big um what are they called? Pantaloons or, or bloomers, I think they call them, that the ladies used to wear in the old times, like you know, this big fluffy white. They used to wear like these white um like pants almost like a pre-pants but like fluffy and um lacy with like ruffles on them and you look just like these bottom feathers that the hens have it's so funny i'm like they must have been inspired by by chickens when they designed those pantaloons or bloomers whatever they're called i don't know if they're called pantaloons or bloomers maybe both i don't know <laughs> in different cultures i know they call different things but you know in any case i'm sure you've seen them at least in the movies um Maybe Pirates of the Caribbean, I think they have something like that, but any old timey movie like that in 1700s or 1800s or something like that, around that area, era. And it's the, the hen feathers are really similar to that. It's so funny. They do have like the same sort of um, thing going on around the face, but on the females, as you can see, it's much smaller. They don't have the dramatic um, red. I don't know what they're called officially, but they're not nearly as dramatic as the as you see on the roosters. Okay. And look how how pretty it is. It's so, I mean, as uncommon a bird as as a chicken. I mean, not uncommon, but as Common a bird as a chicken can have like such like fantastical feathers. It's just I don't know. I think 
young to be more appreciative of nature. I mean, it's it's really something. I mean, these are just like common birds, you know, but look how, how like fancy it is. <laughs> it's a fancy animal, you know? Even though it's common, still fancy. And I think a lot of nature is like that, but we're just so used to seeing it all the time that we don't stop to realize how cool it is. Because I think it's pretty cool. I believe when I spent many years in Michigan. So. It's much more fancy than a chicken nugget. I think this bottom part is a little bit bigger than we've drawn before, right? I'm just going to take a moment to kind of draw over that. And maybe move the legs down just a little bit. I like the hair. Mm. I'm aware of mm. where I'm placing things. Mm. Mm. Or more aware, actually. Okay, and we have just a few more to go. So we're going to start, and this is a pretty bird. Oh, pretty. I'm going to start her off in another four minutes. And she's another female, you can tell. Um, just by how small the, the things on her face are. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> and the shape, the body shape is a bit different too. And also you can always tell because the, the males, the roosters, they have like a, they have like a hook on the back of their feet like that. And that's to fight actually with each other. So that's, um, that's the one of the bigger ways you can sort of spot the, the males. You're trying to, if you're at a barn or a farm one day and you're trying to tell the difference, that's that's the biggest giveaway is that, that toe. <laughs> and I think they call it like a cock claw or something like that, but uh, regardless of what the official name is, um, once they have that, you, you know you're messing with it. With a male, I don't know if they're aggressive or not. I wonder. I know that the male turkeys can be pretty aggressive. I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but this is hilarious video. <laughs> it's scary, but it's it's also hilarious. Of uh, the turkey chasing a male lady, it's so funny. I definitely uh, recommend that you look it up if you have never seen it. It's got to be here on YouTube somewhere. It's so funny. It's just. This lady's, this poor male lady is trying to deliver the mail. This is a regular residential like neighborhood, you know, like in the suburbs or something. It's not like in the middle of nowhere. It's just kind of in the suburbs. And she's trying to deliver the mail to this mailbox. And this <laughs> rooster, not rooster, this giant turkey is huge. It's a huge turkey. <laughs> and it's just an attack. It's like every time she gets close to the mailbox, she tries to like repeatedly and every time she gets close this turkey is like on her like about to <laughs> he chases her it's so it's so scary to me i would be mortified and terrified if it was me and it was a turkey it, you know i think she, you can tell that she's scared but at the same time it's 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 funny looking and even she's laughing but it's like you know she's like she's still like i don't want this turkey to get a hold of me because I don't know what he's capable of and who does? I wouldn't know what to expect from a turkey. I don't know what kind of damage they can do, but I would assume even if it just was a pet, was pecking at you, it probably would hurt uh, at least a little bit. I don't want to experience, I mean, turkeys are big. No, I wouldn't want to experience that. So I would, if I was her, I would just say, hey, you're not going to get your meal today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Or a woman, yeah. At the end, I don't, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen that. But I, now I want to look it up, and maybe I'll 
if I do get a chance to look it up, I would love to share the link because it's so funny. It's so funny. If you guys have, have never seen it, I definitely recommend going to watch that. After you finish drawing, you can listen. Yes, it's pretty funny, yeah. It's pretty funny. What else? Do I have any other chicken or bird stories? Hmm. I remember, say even peacocks, because I remember when we were really young, my sister got um, pecked by by an aggressive peacock at a local bush garden. So <laughs> this is in the 80s, this is a long time ago. But I know that peacocks can be aggressive also. And I just remember the tears. But I just remember mm. there was a lot of tears. That's all mm. I could say. Mm. Hey, chicken. Mm. Uh, chicken. And what else? Let's see. Another chicken. This is a rooster. You see, they got this big, that one is, has huge claws. That's tremendous. That is abnormally, they're usually not that big. But this one is like, he's something else. And look at, I think it's, 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 it doesn't have as much of the booty as the, the female has. The female have that, the big, you know, that big hanging, <laughs> those big hanging feathers at the bottom. Look at the difference between that. And that, yeah, it's a big difference. Hmm, that's interesting. But anyway, those pencil marks that I did of the chicken butt on there. And let's go ahead and do this drawing and let's start now. And it looks nothing like foghorn leghorn. If you guys remember Foghorn Leghorn, <laughs> it was a big uh, rooster in the old Warner Brothers cartoons, which I loved all of those Looney Tunes. And that chicken that used to always go crazy for him, that was hilarious. I wish they had cartoons like the old days, that was so funny. But I hear that's what they do, the chicken's kind of like, you know, get flirty around the, the mat is what I hear. <laughs> and that's kind of interesting. I never like, I don't know that I've never witnessed that or like have seen that. I haven't been around chickens very much in my life. I kind of like grew up in New York City, so you know, we didn't really have a lot of chickens around. But I just think it's pretty interesting, just the different habits that animals have. And coming from someone who used to want to be a veterinarian, as a kid, you know, like all of these animal facts are always interesting to me. So if you have like any random animal facts, post it. <laughs> I would love to hear. I mean, I'm super interested. I love animals. I love um, drawing animals. I love animal facts and learning about animals. So if you have any fun facts that you would like to share, that'd be awesome. chest that they have and this kind of magnificent mane that comes down here. That's pretty cool. You know, that foot looks really weird and gross actually. <laughs> It's like one too many toes. It looks really gross. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, it's starting to draw it. It's kind of grossing out the toe. It did too much toes. And then the big book in the back. Yeah, that's a little bit extra. A little bit extra. <clears throat> that's actually was my alarm. I got to go pick up my son from the school bus. But we still have a few minutes. We got pretty early. But it was not the tender for this drawing. We still have a couple more minutes to go. We only have about a minute to go for this drawing. So don't put your pencils down just yet. And just keep it going. It's like look at those they kind of have he almost has like a second mane on his 
on, the, on his rear, like in the back, he's got like some thinner feathers that go right before you get to the crest of this, these big, huge feathers on the tail. And that's pretty interesting. I don't know if I noticed that on the females. It could be something that only the males have as well. I think it's all interesting. I can't really see his toe um, on that side, but I can kind of, kind of wing it a little bit with this because I think I can see just enough. And now that we've drawn a few, feel a little bit more comfortable with winging it. You know, might not be totally accurate. I kind of get the gist of it. And that's our timer. So we got one more drawing. And this is the female. You see the difference? Like the females look really different. They don't have those magnificent tail feathers. Uh, they don't have as much of a mane and they don't have all of that the whole head piece that the male has. So let's go ahead and start. Chicken. That is like a Kakama insult, but I guess, they, I don't know. I haven't been around chickens enough to know if they really are, if they really are chicken. Are they really afraid of everything? I don't know. I just haven't been around them enough. It would be interesting to find out. I mean, when I've seen them, I don't see them like running away from anybody. But they really do. Of course, when I see them, they're like behind the fence and everything. So I guess they kind of. Maybe they learned if they are smart enough. I don't know how intelligent they are either, as far as I know. Um, they got the expression bird brain for a reason. But um, maybe they, they know that they're, at least that they're safe behind the fence, perhaps. They realize that. Or at least that they have their big male chicken with them who will protect them which I believe um, they do, I don't know, to what extent, but I'm pretty sure the males do something. I mean, why else would they have all of those huge claws and stuff uh, to fight other roosters, but also to protect their hands, I would think. Maybe the male chickens aren't so chicken after all, who knows. They have a bunch of documentaries on wild animals, but there's not a whole lot on domestic animals. Maybe there should be a little bit more on. I know they're not as cool and interesting, but I think I think it would be pretty neat to see a little bit more of documentation on domestic animals. I'd watch it. <laughs> Might be the only one, but I'd watch it. I can't really see that back, but there's always like hiding under something. And I can kind of assume a little bit, but I don't want to assume already. And I can kind of see what's happening just a little bit. I gave her like a claw. She doesn't even have one. But she has like this back toe, but she doesn't need a claw. <laughs> My bad. Sorry, lady. I gave you a claw when you didn't need one. I'm just going to move her foot up a little bit then. Because that back foot. And let's see what else we can add to her. Right here. 
Kraft hier. was cool okay guys um that's it for today um i hope you guys enjoy the wildlife drawing uh animal drawing actually and let me switch over to if i can see you guys where you can see me at least <laughs> uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this animal drawing and i hope you guys come back next time because we will be back for more drawing um and until next time you guys dream big Live balance, be grateful, and of course, of course, of course, be yourself. And like I said in Creative Friday, which is up now, um, start today. So if you want to get started with your career, if you want to get started with getting better, if you want to get started with working towards your dream again, start today. And um, I hope that encourages someone out there. And I will see you next time.